So we know that antibiotics affect the growth patterns of, of animals. So farm animals, you know, were exposed to antibiotics for a long time, which made them um, grow faster and larger. Stephanie Prescott, a PhD student, is a longtime neonatal nurse practitioner. So I wanted to know, is this something that we have to worry about with our children that are exposed to antibiotics before delivery? She's also part of a team of scientists studying the microbiome's role in obesity, metabolic disorders, inflammation, and the development of cancer. With more than half of American women now taking antibiotics during their pregnancies, Prescott's work aims to examine the effect on babies, both short and long term. In her early work, Prescott had two groups of pregnant mice. One had been exposed to several doses of common antibiotics, and the other was not. So first I wanted to see if there was even a difference in the microbiota in, in, the, in the babies. And so I looked at the babies, I looked at the different um, you know, GI compartments, so in the stomach, the ileum, the colon, um, the feces, and I found differences in every compartment. Um, I found them early and I found them late. Then Prescott put all the mice pups on a typical Western diet, 50% carbohydrates, 35% fat, and very little fiber. And then, uh, and then I just weigh them and see who gets fatter. Ultimately, she found that mice pups exposed to antibiotics during gestation and then raised on a Western diet are 37% more likely to be obese than those not exposed. Two, exposed mice had higher glucose levels and more metabolic syndromes than those who hadn't been exposed. You know, we're talking about extremely limited doses of antibiotics, still only one to three doses, very, very short, which is typical for what a mother would get, yes, a human mother. <laughs> Prescott's also working on understanding the microbiota of human beings by studying blood, tissue, and fecal samples at UVA from new mothers and their babies who've agreed to help. You know, I certainly would never say that mouse research is going to translate exactly to human research. But it is going to point us into a direction. If you have um, an effect that you can see for a long time in a mouse, that chances are higher that you're going to have a similar effect in those. As nursing students, we don't typically even know that this is a possible avenue for us. And we tend to we do a lot of um, bedside research or, you know, direct patient research, which I love too. And I definitely don't want to give up my contact with patients. But I think because animal research allows you to do such strict controls and such mechanistic studies, that we can really inform our bedside science 